Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bella and I'm a seamstress and so today I wanted to walk you through some of the ideas that I've been saving for upcoming sewing projects that I want to be working on. This time of year is probably my favorite time when it comes to fashion and making clothing. So I have a lot of ideas and I'm sure they're only going to spiral from here on out. So I wanted to show you some of the things that I've been saving on Pinterest and sort of walk you through my thought process on how I'm going to actually make these things in real life, what sort of inspiration I'm gonna take from different garments and just generally what my plans are for my fall wardrobe. So let's get started. If you sew and you don't use Pinterest, get your life together because you need somewhere to organize all of these ideas, all of these little details that you see on clothing that you think, oh my gosh, I need to learn how to do that or I need to remember to incorporate that into my next sewing project. Get Pinterest, start a board. You can divide it up into sections even if you wanna get like really anal about it and organize a ton like I do. I love lists, I love organization, I love sorting out the chaos in my brain somewhere in real life that I can look at it and feel more at peace. Pinterest is a little bit tricky, especially if you want to purchase any of the things that I'm talking about. It's hard to find the actual original source. It shows who uploaded it, but the image may have been uploaded, I don't even know how many times. So I'm just gonna be showing the screenshots of how I originally found these on Pinterest if any of you want to search them out because I know when I post sewing info on TikTok, sometimes I get comments asking where things are from or where people can buy things. It's a little bit hard to tell on Pinterest, but I'm leaving you with as much information as I know. So let's get started. This first look is really fun. I absolutely love this because I think it's a really great sort of transitional look that you can create to move you from this warm weather into colder months. I think this is two separate pieces because in the comments on the side, it says that the top is from cider. So in that case, both the top and bottoms, great separate pieces. You can mix and match them with other things, but they also look really amazing and cohesive together. It's the kind of thing where you can't really tell if it's a one piece or not. I think you could layer this up really easily with like a big button down jacket could look cool over it or even layering underneath it, like a really slim fit, um, like polo neck, sort of like short turtleneck, or like a sheer top of some sort. If you paired like a black sheer top under that, I think that could be quite cool. What I would do if I wanted to make a top like this is I would first choose my fabric wisely. I would want to pick a stretch fabric that wasn't too thin or like flimsy something that has like a moderate amount of firmness to it i wouldn't want to make this with too much give just because this straight across tube top doesn't offer very much support especially if you have a bit of a bigger bust so what i would do is pick a stretchy fabric i might even go with a ribbed fabric, I think that could be quite nice. So I would draft a pattern for a tube top and then I would probably double that. So I would be lining it in the same fabric just so it's really, really thick and like feels like solid quality. And then what I would do is finish off both bottoms of each of those layers first. So you have clean hems to begin with. I think that that's a really nice way to do this. I would cut the lining just a little bit shorter just to make sure it's sat like just above the hem of the outside. And then to put those together, I would of course put them right sides facing each other and I would put just put my machine on a zigzag stitch or you could serge it if you wanted to. And then before I fully put them together, whatever sort of neckline you wanna work with, I would find a pattern that has that, something that's very form-fitting to you and then just sort of trace that diagonal shape across and make sure that you have a decent amount of fabric to support it on both sides. I think that on the back, I wouldn't necessarily continue with that diagonal shape. I think it would look quite cool, but I would be worried about that open shoulder, that fabric kind of curling up. 
So I think I would continue that straight down the back to make both of the backs of the armholes completely symmetric, if that makes sense. So to attach that, I would do it as if you were sort of inserting a strap into a top like that. If you've worked like that before, or if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, we do that a lot. So I would just kind of sandwich that in between the um, two layers of the bodice and just stitch it right in there. I think it would actually be relatively easy as long as you could make it like nice and form fitting, but it ends up looking a little bit more complex, which is why I really love this. Okay, moving on. I don't know if I over explained that. Next is a big challenge. I don't know if I have too much to say about this even because I am not sure how to make a puffy coat like this, but I really want to. Um, I do love the color of this one, but I think particularly what I am missing in my wardrobe is outer layers for the winter, not just the fall. I have a lot of jackets, but not so many coats and it gets really cold where I live. So a coat like this is always practical. I don't think you can ever have too many if you live in a cold climate. I would love to see this a little bit more cropped and then in like a sand color, I think would be really nice. I've also seen quite a few patchwork puffer coats, which I think are also really cute. I'm not exactly sure on what order of steps I would take with this, but what I do think would be fun is to kind of mix in with the batting that stuffs this coat, mix in like fabric scraps and like scrap thread and stuff like that so that you get a little bit of an upcycling moment there and you can easily reuse some of the materials you have obviously you don't want to use any fabrics that are like too heavy and it would obviously be pretty tedious to cut these scraps into a consistency that would work nicely for this but i think if you had a healthy balance of that and batting that could be quite a cool concept okay next i want to talk about a giant hole i have in my wardrobe which is Elevated basics. I have so many basic pieces and so many statement pieces But something like this dress to me since it's all in one color But it has a lot of different textures and lines going on. I would say that this is an elevated basic I think that completely depends on what your personal style is, but for me this would be an elevated basic. So I absolutely love the mix of materials I'm not sure if the bust and the bottom is actually a separate material or if it's just an underlay, but I think that something like this, I've had a couple more saved that are similar. I love the look of combining lace and velvet, especially going into winter. I am so lacking in just like going out for dinner tops and dresses and stuff like that. So one major principle that I want to be incorporating into my sewing projects coming up is incorporating more textures within a monochromatic look. I'm definitely going to be taking a lot of inspiration from this sort of direction. This next piece is, I would also say, maybe an elevated basic, but if you watched my fall thrift video, then you saw the black like sheath sort of tunic I bought. And I think this gives a similar vibe. After I got that piece, I realized that I love that sort of silhouette on me. So I think this is an amazing layering piece. I just love having the maximum amount of fabric in an outfit when I'm layering up for fall and winter. So I think a few pieces like this in different basic neutral tones would be really useful. I would use a similar technique attaching those side inserts like we talked about in the first look where you want to line this with something and then sandwich those in between the lining and the outer shell as you're sewing it together it's a really really simple technique once you get it down it's so useful so i think this would be pretty easy to make and the nice thing about it is because it's open on the sides it would be a really great beginner's pattern to draft i'm not good at pattern drafting at all i barely even know basic principles. I kind of just do it blindly and hope that it works. So something like this would be really easy for a beginner because it's not 
super fitted. It doesn't really matter if you mess up on the fit too much because the sides are open. You have a lot to work with. And the easiest thing to adjust in this if you get the fit not quite right for the outer shell would be to just make those side pieces bigger or smaller based on the fit that you want. Taking it one step further to actually make this a little bit more versatile for any outfit would be instead of just a straight across piece there, make a side piece that ties. So maybe leave the first piece at, towards the top of the armhole. I really like that. But then for wherever you line it up with your waist, if you had on each side two ties that come together, that could be really chic. You could tie them together or you could even do just one on each side and make it like a wrap situation. And then you have that added statement of tying those together in the front or in the back and having that like crisscross detail. That's really pretty too. Ooh, and a contrasting color too. That would be really, really cool. If you had like the sheath in black and then like a cream white or like taupe um, accent for the ties, that could be really nice. And it gives you that little bit of duality with the fit. If you're not quite committed to a sheath sort of silhouette, then you also have the option with the ties to accentuate your waist a little bit if that's something you're more comfortable with. Ooh, okay. Something almost exactly like this dress. I need a basic. Again, I think this is pretty basic for me. Maybe slightly elevated, but I love this dress. I just need like a very basic black satin cut on the bias. And then I love the detail of the lace in the cuffs. I don't think I would go fully transparent like that. I think they are, um, that's just not the most practical thing for me, but I love this look. I think it's so nice. Such a great basic to have in your wardrobe. And something like this also, I think can take you through the entire year. So it'd be a really great thing if I wanted to invest a little bit more in a fabric Something like this would be a good opportunity for that. Okay, next. This top, I love, again, mixing materials, something I really want to start incorporating. This is from House of CB. They have a lot of great garments if you want to look somewhere for inspiration for just things that look really flattering on a lot of different body types, in my opinion, at least. Something like this, for example, it's just a basic black top, right? but I think that squarish sort of rounded square neckline is really flattering, especially if you have a small bust like I do. I don't have a lot to work with there. So a square neckline is always really flattering for me personally. And then I also love the fact that the velvet accent in the center tapers down. It slightly rounds around the bust, which again is going to be really flattering because it accentuates that curve. And then it tapers in at the waist, which kind of draws your eye in and gives you the illusion of like a slimming effect if that's something that you are trying to achieve then a detail like that can be really beneficial especially if you're sewing something for yourself the world is your oyster you can make anything you can sew with anything you can do any lines that work for your exact body which is something that i just absolutely love about sewing i can never find a garment that flatters my body type like in a store the way that I can if I sew something for myself because I just know what works for me so well and I can really take those core principles that I think look great on my body and that's where I choose to go in the direction of my sewing and just keep improving so everything just keeps getting more flattering. So mixing materials in the same color can be a really great trick to use it still has a really basic cohesive look, but then you are able to use that secondary material to add a little bit more interest and accentuate the areas that you want to accentuate or hide the areas that you want to hide. You really have so many options. So I love that. Okay, vests. I really, really, really want to get into vests because I think, again, similar to that sheath, very simple to draft a pattern for. Something about me, I hate sleeves i absolutely hate sleeves probably my least favorite thing ever to sew sometimes i'll cut a pattern for a sleeve and then i'll just leave it off the garment completely because i get lazy and i don't want to put it on i still have yet to learn about ease and all of these sleeve tricks and everything because i just i hate them so 
I want to start incorporating a lot more vests. I love this one because again, it's sort of like a wrap tie style. I love ties, love ties. It's a great beginner tip if you are a little bit wary about how things are going to fit and how your guessing skills are when it comes to like circumference fit like this vest or if you're attaching straps, if you're afraid that they're just going to be off and then you have to rip it all out again. Ties are amazing and then you also have the added interest of a bow, which is always really cute in my opinion. I'm going to assume that this fabric and this garment particularly already came quilted and then it's just together on the edges with some sort of seam binding or piping, which is a really pretty detail. But quilting fabric myself is something that I've never really attempted. So I think that a vest could be a really great beginner way to sort of try something like that out. I also really love like puffy vests. I kind of got into that last year. So I wouldn't mind attempting something a little bit puffier than this vest. I think that would be a nice stepping stone to eventually graduate into a puffy jacket because a vest, again, doesn't have sleeves. It's just a lot more manageable for me. So, vests. Love vests. Such a great layering piece, such a great accent, just like a cherry on top of an outfit. And of course, they're practical. Again, if you live in a cold climate, you can never have too many layering pieces. That's like the key to being fashionable and warm at the same time. Just layer, 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 layer. Okay, next, this dress. Oh my god, this dress. That's the, the caption is this dress. Look, you guys, I don't know who this is. I don't know who made this dress. I don't know how it was done. I don't know how I'm going to attempt to make something like this, but holy shit, I love it. The only thing that I can think is that you would have to construct this out of a material that was relatively structured and not stretchy and just be very meticulous about the way in which you go about doing this because i can't see those cutouts looking so like clean and crisp without the fabric not having a lot of give to it oh my god i love it love it i don't know if you notice also the straps i love the detail of having a pointless dangly strap coming down that's not doing anything at all but i just like that little bit of detail especially in a sparkly material i just think that that like makes it look almost casual or like effortless but then it's so luxe because it's like beaded or rhinestones or something like that i love the bow details i always love an accent bow and i especially love that that echoes the same material used in the straps again i think that gives it a cohesive luxe kind of look i think maybe if i were to recreate something like this i might just have to scale down the cutouts a little bit maybe leave out the center one and maybe leave out the sides before where it connects with the bow and just kind of go for two side accent cutouts sort of tied together not actually tied together but you know the illusion of being tied together with bows i think this is like my number one dream dress at the moment so we'll see if i can create something similar someday when i have the effort energy, time, and skill. Next is another velvet piece. I absolutely love this. Again, just another really amazing basic to have. I have the most beautiful navy blue vintage velvet. It's like the original velvet when it was still like really heavy and beautiful and the pile is almost on like a chiffon sort of back. I don't know a lot about textile history. Definitely something I need to brush up on, but However they used to make velvet, it's not the same anymore, I'm assuming, unless you get an extremely expensive velvet. So I wanna do this fabric justice. I think something along the lines of this bodice, like a really structured bodice with cups and boning would be really gorgeous, but then maybe take that fabric and turn it into a dress, cause I do have enough to do that. And I think that might be a little bit more of a special project to incorporate it into. But if I wanted to go for just a kind of wardrobe basic like this top again it's one of those like nice going out for dinner drinks tops for my wardrobe at least so i would probably opt for more like a stretchy velour kind of fabric as opposed to a really beautiful vintage velvet even though that would be amazing i don't know that it necessarily would be the most practical if you like this sort of 
corset structured vibe. If you're a beginner sewist, I think going with a material that has a decent amount of give to it, like stretch, but still kind of firm to the point where it can be supportive and like kind of lifting, that's gonna help you achieve a really, really beautiful fit without having to be super exact because when you're working with like cups and boning and darts and all the things that actually go into creating a really structured like corset style top, if you're working with something that doesn't have any give at all, you're just gonna have to be that much more precise. So it's gonna take you a lot longer if you haven't worked with bodices a lot. And if you're not used to cutting patterns that are like very form fitting, there's a lot more that goes into it than meets the eye. So I think that for a beginner, and I'm saying this as somebody who is like, not a beginner, but like a little bit too lazy to do all of that sometimes, even I would still opt for a somewhat stretchy fabric for this. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna look cheap or anything like that. There's some really beautiful stretchy materials out there that don't appear like they would be. So keep your eye out. Again, if you sew, your options are truly endless. So there's a lot of great options. Something amazing about working with a top like this too is that it doesn't really require that much fabric as compared to if you were investing in fabric for a floor length dress obviously that's going to be really expensive but for something like this you really won't need that much so you can jump up a little bit in the quality of the fabric and not have to sacrifice that much money as opposed to if this was a dress you might want to save a little but that's also the nice thing about making your own clothing is you kind of get to decide where you want to invest in quality and where you want to kind of take that out it's like being the manufacturer like if you are at all a vintage clothing enthusiast you've probably looked at a million vintage garments and you're like why can't we make garments like this anymore i look at some of the things that my grandma or my great grandma would sew and i'm like i don't even know what these finishes are called i don't know how i would begin to do any of these so you can only imagine how much those finishes would cost to manufacture. When you're doing it yourself, you really get to decide where do you wanna save on time? Where do you wanna spend more time? Where do you wanna save on money? Where do you wanna spend more money? Where do you want that quality to be up a little bit? Where do you not really care? Maybe you wanna spend a lot of money on a beautiful fabric for this because you don't really need that much fabric. But then maybe for like the trimmings for the straps, for example, you just don't care. Or maybe you wanna do a beautiful like rhinestone strap on it and then you're like, I don't care if it's a cheap fabric as long as it looks nice, save on money on the fabric and then you can embellish it with whatever trims you want and put your money there. So it's really up to you. You have all the freedom and control and that is why sewing is just the best hobby ever to have. Okay, I think that does it for all my sewing inspo for now. I hope this gave you some ideas to incorporate into your wardrobe, especially for fall coming up. I think a lot of these ideas are just so suited to the season coming up, which is my favorite season. So I'm really, really excited to start on some of these projects and I'll definitely be filming them along the way. I think a couple of these would be really great to do actual in-depth tutorials for so keep an eye out for those if you enjoyed this video please give it a like down below because that really helps me out and subscribe if you want to see more sewing content from me and i'll see you back here next time